Yo, what is up guys? Delboy here, aka Blue Collar Sports TV. Hopefully you guys are doing well. If you're new here, smash that like, hit subscribe, all of that good stuff. So Hamza Shiraz moves to 21-0 and by knocking out Tyler Denny in the second round to become the new European middleweight champion. There's not really too much to discuss about this fight. I think we all expected Hamza Shiraz to win, it was more so how was he going to win. Tyler Denny has had a Cinderella Man type of run in recent kind of years, beating undefeated prospects at domestic level, beating Felix Cash in a fight he was supposed to lose, becoming the European champion. He's done well in recent years, and I think some people expected... I expected this to go a few rounds. I I think people expected Denny to give Shiraz a few rounds, but... Ultimately, Shiraz would end up winning. Shiraz won, but in much quicker fashion than I expected. Second round stoppage, as I said. It was like man versus boy, to tell you the truth. It was like these guys were three weight classes apart. It was crazy. Um, immediately, Hamza Shiraz set his stall out early on. Uh, good balance. Prodding and probing with the jab. Getting his distance down. And kind of forcing Tyler Denny back. Denny was trying to keep low and, you know, trying to stay in a crouch, trying to make himself elusive. But in round one, uh, Shiraz fires the left hook, hits the top of um, Denny's head, kind of scrambles him a little bit. Then he fires another left hook, this time hitting the temple, and it drops Tyler Denny. Um, one thing I didn't realise uh, until now is that Hamza Shiraz is actually left-handed, but he fights in, a, in, in an orthodox stance. So he, obviously that's why his jab is powerful and the left hook is powerful. I actually never realised that, by the way. Um, but you could see early on that left hand was causing so many problems for Tyler Denny. He couldn't get past the distance, and when the left hook landed, it was causing problems. So he was dropped in round one, and... Ultimately, man, it looked like it would be a matter of time right from then. Just physically, these two guys were in a different league. Technically, they were in a different league. You know, it was what it was. Round two was where the fight ended. Again, the damage caused by a, by a initially by a left hook. Shiraz then follows with an overhand right. And then I think he culminates it with a left hook. It drops Tyler Denny, uh, Tyler Denny again. Denny does beat the count, but he's kind of unsteady. The referee mercifully waves it off. I think he realised, you know, these guys are like 17 weight classes apart. Tyler Denny is way too small. He's he's way too outskilled. He's outsized. He's outstrengthed. He's outpowered. He's out everything, basically. And yeah, the referee, I think, saw the writing on the wall. And for me, he rightfully waved it off. Listen, I'm not saying Tyler Denny is a great fighter because he's not. But he's done well in recent times at domestic level. And, you know, Hamza Shiraz went through him like a doorway, becoming the new European champion. Uh, for me, when it comes to Hamza Shiraz, I'll be honest, usually I'm, I'm the type, when it comes to young younger fighters, I'm, I'm usually the type to say there's no rush. But for me, when you look at the middleweight division, it's so weak. I think they should pursue a title fight right now. Uh, Yanabek's got a fight coming up in October, so maybe that's out of the question. But, like, if they could get a guy like Carlos Adames, or even an Erislandi Lara, I know it's kind of early to say, I know I know Shiraz is unproven still, but, you know, Lara's 41 years old, and Adames is a good fighter, but he's nothing special, you know? The way I look at the middleweight division, if Hamza Shiraz was scheduled to fight anybody other than Yanabek, I'd probably pick Hamza Shiraz to win. You know, that's what I would be trying to do with Hamza Shiraz. I'd be trying to get a title fight with either Erislandi Lara or Carlos Adames. Try to unify those two titles and then go after Yanabek. Um, but even Yanabek himself, man, it's not like yanabek has been super active recently, you know? Um, middleweight right, is wide open right now and any title shot, even Yanabek himself, any title shot that Shiraz can get, he should take right now, because there's nobody there for Shiraz, who is he going to fight, if, if he doesn't fight for a title, Shane Mosley Jr., I mean, who wants to see that, 
You know, there's nobody at middleweight. Barely. Barely anybody at middleweight. Um, so, yeah, I, I think they should pursue a title fight next. Good performance by Shiraz. Good stoppage. Good left hook. Good accuracy. Good poise. Good power. You know, didn't take any damage. I, I'm assuming he didn't pick up any injuries. I'd like to see him out again end of the year. You know, throw the bag at Carlos Adames. Throw the bag at Erezlandi Lara. See what happens. That's how I see it. Um, because I don't think I don't think at this point in time Shiraz will learn anything from these sort of fights. I, th- I think you need to throw him in now. In, in a world title fight. That's how I see it. But, um, but yeah, good performance by Shiraz, man. He's impressing me. He's getting better, I think. He does the basics very well. Combine that with size and power. If you have decent fundamentals... And you've got size, height, reach, and power. You can go a long way in boxing. And uh, and Shiraz, just based on that, is going to be a problem. Yanabek is the fight that is the most risky, obviously. I think based on what we've seen, I'd still favour Yanabek. But outside of Yanabek at 160, I think I might pick Shiraz to beat everybody. To tell you the truth. But anyway, share your thoughts below. Beanie Guy Del Boy. Peace.